praise God, amen. Let's just uh, take a minute to pray for, I know what, thank you very much, Andrea, for picking up the song and leading us into prayer this morning. But you know that song, sometimes is one song that you hear God's voice in it. And that song, Gods of Miracle, it's almost like I could picture someone. That's exactly what they're asking. It's like they're on their floor and crying out to God, saying, God of Miracle, come. I need you. I need you, God of Miracle. Unless you show up in my situation, this family situation is not going to change. So let's just take a moment. I like to encourage people, if you pray in town, just speak, let the Holy Spirit intercede for you. They just take that moment to tap into heaven and ask for the God of miracle. God of miracle, we call on to you. Yes, we ask for your miracle for breakthrough. That's what you specialize in. You are a God who perform miracles. You do wonders that go beyond our thinking and our imagination. And Father, you hear the cry of my sister. You hear the cry of my brother. Even those who are in the home, they're crying out to you like, does anybody see me? Does anybody see how much I cry nobody cares but father you do you see everyone in the home even right now those who are in our church right now today and those who will be watching online we call on to the God of miracle we say you are a living God you are the same your word says in Hebrews 11 8 I believe it says he's the same yesterday today and forever so we tap into heaven right now we tap into to the to heaven accessing your throne and accessing your throne of grace saying god of miracles you will come to our rescue you will come to the rescue of those crying on to you for a miracle those asking you for a breakthrough oh father before the end of the year you will see them through you will give everyone a testimony in the name of jesus Father, we thank you. We'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory. For you are a good God and you love us. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I welcome those watching online. I welcome the congregation here today. We're having a fantastic time just worshiping God, being together. And I hope that at home you are doing well as well. If you are not well, we know some people who are part of our church family this very morning. They are not well. We send love through the wave and we send the light and the life of Jesus through you. We say receive healing, receive wholeness from the top of your head to the sole of your feet in Jesus name receive your breakthrough for the God of miracle will come to your rescue in Jesus name amen and amen I do pray that you are doing okay wherever you are and I where you sat there and those at home I pray that you feel encouraged as we come around the word of God there is life in the word of God we are in the book of Colossians I wonder if you have been enjoying spending time in the word of god just asking the holy spirit speak to me and i pray even as you do your own study at home when we share the word you go home and you open up the scripture yourself the holy spirit is giving you a private lessons as you open the scripture allow me to bless the word as i always do holy spirit i thank you that you're in this room today you are here right now and right now i just ask you as i always do breathe on this word what i have prepared unless you give it life it will end up being nonsense but i ask that you give meaning to your word you give meaning to this prepared word and you speak to each and every one of us in jesus name amen so the book of Colossians is quite interesting. Paul writing letters to the believers at Colossae. The past few Sundays, we have been looking at chapter one, we're looking at chapter two, and it's amazing how different um, 
messages coming through it because of what the Holy Spirit, we felt how the Spirit of God was leading us through the letter of the Apostle Paul and somehow it becomes relevant to our own life as well in, in a funny way where he wrote it to uh, believers somewhere far away from where he was set, he was uh, in prison in Rome but it relevant to us because those believers are part were part of a church the church at Colossae and then the same way we are also believers those who are not with us physically you're i'm hoping that you're part of a church if not physical we are all part of the church of the body of christ and there's always issues going on in a church and and so paul in uh, chapter three first of all we we last week we looked at um the four verses of the beginning of Colossians chapter 3 and my goodness it was absolutely amazing how Paul was encouraging believers to rise up to the realm of the reality and to begin to understand which level they're at where they're operating so that they can and position themselves in a place of victory when they approach the throne and then all of a sudden we're gonna hit Take it from where we left up from verse 5 today and we're going to find out that, uh oh, okay, serious stuff, serious issues. Okay, Paul has been encouraging them, talking to them about the spirit, spiritual realm, how they need to rise up. If you died in Christ, you raise up, you, are, you need to um, uh, always focus on things above, looking above, you know, uh, on um, focusing on the, the realm of the spirit and not... Minima, um, um, and not focalizing yourself on the earthly things. But then in verse 5, as we're going to read today, we'll find out that Paul stopped to talk about serious issues that the church was going through. And then when you look at the list, you'll find out that you and I, because you are part of a body of Christ, you're part of a church, we also need to not underestimate that the flesh is always with us. So if we want to rise up to a level that is bringing us in a space of victory, we need to also deal with those issues which are stopping us and are, and are creating a barrier between us and heaven. Those issues need to be dealt with. This is what we're going to look at. Just a quick recap to encourage always before you go into your Bible study. Why are you reading the chapter? What are, do you want to get out of it? You always want to stop and wonder, uh, is, is there going to be edification? Because I'm looking for something God is speaking to my situation and my, today. Because this is uh, what, the wonders of the scripture is that you read a letter. But if you go to it, trusting God that you're going to speak to me it becomes alive and it becomes relevant to you you will find applications very important to remember don't just read the letter i need to find if god says something if there is an instruction that i can apply to my life i need to apply it so so far in chapter one chapter two of colossians what we've read and even last time colossians verse chapter three verse one to four everything that we have learned have you stopped to think, how do I apply it to my own life? Because that's growth. That's how you begin to grow. You learn to be hearing God's voice. You will come to God and say, Lord, I'm asking you about this situation. And oftentimes we forget that he will turn around and say, what did you do about the instruction I gave you last time? So you follow on to what God has spoken to you. In other words, you learn to apply what you have learned so far from the word. And every time you do that act of obedience, another revelation is open up. And then you move forward. And that's how it, um, it goes on and on. And that's how we grow. And God uh, answers our prayer. When you take one step, you do what he said before. And then he gives you another light. I found it very interesting when I read from verse 5. In fact, um, it's very obvious that Paul is, is the Apostle Paul. 
is not shying away. You read it, we're going to read it in a minute as well. As you see straight away that he's not shying away from doing what you'll hear the expression call a spade a spade. Just don't beat around the bush. You know, if you ever find it annoying when you're talking to someone, you know, even like the British way of being polite, excuse me, sir. Uh, uh, normally, we actually rather you would walk toward the left side. No, just tell the person you are not allowed to go to the left side of this building or it's non-access so rather than beat around the bush. So Paul is not beating around the bush. It's just going bang. This is what's happening. It's unacceptable, the issues going on in the church. You guys are supposed to leave, as I like the New International Version, it says, uh, um, it, the title even of the whole chapter, it says, uh, living as those made alive in Christ. It says you are supposed to be living as those made alive in Christ. But you, with the things I'm hearing, the issue, the sins that I'm hearing about, um, the church at Colosse, it really like uh, dead men walking because you have been made alive in Christ, but you're not living like believers who are made alive in Christ. You are living like dead men walking. I can't do the zombie bit, but you picture it. Let's read Romans 8, 10 to 11, first of all, to see what Paul is trying to get the believer to understand and then we'll turn straight to Colossians chapter 3 from verse 5. Romans 8 it says but if Christ is in you from verse 10 Romans 8 from verse 10 to 11 but if Christ is in you then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal, mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. In other words, you have Jesus inside of you. You have the same spirit that Christ has the same spirit that brought the body of Christ to life. He's living in you guys. You also need to remember that he's the same spirit bringing this body for you are subject to death. You ever thought about it? Every single one of us, we are subject to death. Every time you feel, maybe you have a little cough or you have a little, whatever it is, you have a little sickness. It's always the, the, um, a sign that something is fighting you because we are subject to death. But because we believe in Jesus Christ, there is a big difference between those who believe in Jesus and those who don't. And the main difference Paul wants us to understand is that we who have Jesus Christ in us, we are supposed to understand that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in us. It's like while we are subject to death, he is there ready to bring us back to life. Therefore, we do not have to fulfill the desire of the flesh. Otherwise, we become dead men walking. Colossians chapter 3, let's go straight into to reading our uh, scripture today from verse 5. Let's take it chunk by chunk. So we take verse 5 to 10 first, and then we'll, we'll go on afterward. It says, Colossians chapter 3 from verse 5, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immoral, immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Verse 6, it said, because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in this way in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all the such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practice practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. And verse 11, it says here, there is no gentle or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, sentient, slave or free, but Christ is in all. And basically, let's stop there for a minute. You see on this list, 
It's like, whoa, Paul, these are heavy sins, you can actually say. He actually named them. He actually went bluntly, this is happening. When you think about it, Paul as the apostle, he's got the authority to correct and rebuke the church and whatever is going on. It got me thinking that if he took the time to write and say, hey, I don't really want to talk about this, you know, but I have to name these type of sin. It's unacceptable, yet it's going on in the church. How many know that even in this day and age that we need to open up our eyes that every single one, just like we are subject in Romans 8 to say subject to death, we are also subject to sin because we are living with the flesh. In fact, you, you read this, it should actually remind us that because we are subject to death and the flesh is always fighting us to go back into what is filthy and unholy, we, are, we need to be asking for help, the Holy Spirit to help us. Because what we listed, I say, wow, Paul, you actually listed the whole thing. But you know how hard it is for people to say, okay, I won't stop. I, I, I'll stop lying. I won't lie anymore. I'll stop doing this. It's, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. So we will always need to go back to the Holy Spirit and ask for help. I know someone called Dr. Cindy Trim. She talks about the law of re replacement. She said that there is no such a thing as a, a vacuum in a human being, even for natural things. Well, people just trying an example, trying to change a diet that right from now on, I will not be drinking so much sugary drinks. I won't be drinking so much whatever it is. I don't want to offend it anymore. Supposedly Coke because it's got, you know, Coca-Cola, it's got a lot of sugar in it sorry if you drink it no judgment but i'm just giving you as an example supposedly you want to say right yeah um, the end of year is coming instead of waiting for january i decide i will no longer i know it's wrong i will no longer be drinking so much coca-cola or, or sugary drink the lower re of replacement is actually a law that if you want real change real progress you have to replace the bad habit with a good one you can't just stop i'm not drinking because you will struggle this is what um in other world where those who are going through you know therapy they call cold turkey or something yes. so the lower of replacement is actually always replace what bad habits you want to change with something good so the list that paul has given you will see in the other verses that he actually without saying is actually um, putting to test the law of replacement because he's going to list things that can be replaced and should be replaced with the uh well, the bad uh, the sins which are uh, going on in the church and are unacceptable. So think about it even in terms of practicality, for your own good. I'm trying to be good at such and such, then replace it with something else. Replace it. I don't want to be uh, doing this anymore. Replace, what is it that you're gonna replace it? So maybe if you're struggling, like I said, with the uh, Coca-Cola or sugary drink, every time that you are used to every two hours i have to get my uh, drink every two hours maybe replace it with water bottle that is already there um pure mineral water waiting for you to you know gobble on and drink something so you replacing it with something there's always that conflict you have we have you and i need to be aware made aware of the fact that just because we went through nicely chapter one chapter two of colossian it was like wow amazing we're finding revelation all the sudden uh oh it's a little bit we don't want to talk about this but i believe even as we're reading the list of sin and this it's important for us to remember that the flesh just because it's been listed there said so that's a heavy sin i can't do i don't really do this this. I'm not tempted for this, but you could be, you could have a shortcoming in another area. It's just a sin that you think as a human being that you there's always war between flesh and spirit. In fact, let's like, turn to Galatians 5, where you will hear in Galatians 5, there's like a frustration, Paul himself saying how he's acknowledging like, yeah, I want to do something, but the, the flesh is always against the spirit. It's like a, um, a conflict. And so help me God. Galatians 5, 16. 
16 to 17, it says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desire, the desires of the flesh. Verse 17, for the flesh desire what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. And when you go on and listen to that old passage, you will hear almost a frustration in Paul. Is also him who wrote Galatians. There's a frustration there saying, hey, let's be realistic here. Every single one of us, because you have a body. You know, that conflict will stop the moment you die, but you have flesh with you. So if you believe in God, you want to be made alive in Christ, you really have to put an effort into it. You really, really have to learn to do that law of replacement, which we're going to read from verse 10 onward with the things that you sh you're supposed to do. But I want to add, as you go on the list in Galatians 5, he actually gives, you know, the fruit of the Spirit there. Whichever area you're struggling, even just, you know, be selfishness, the fruit, one thing of the fruit of the Spirit is just being kind and generous. It's right there. But you will go to the Holy Spirit and say, help me. Never ever, what I, sh I learned from this is never ever shy away from asking help from the Holy Spirit. Say, help me in this area of the flesh in conflict with the Spirit in my life. I struggle with this and this. The Apostle Paul took his time concerning certain sins that issues were in the church. But for me and you, it could be a different type of sin. What your brother is struggling with is not what your sister is struggling with. But everybody, what you hear someone say, fighting some demons. You, you, the sooner you acknowledge it, the better you are. It's like you've made one step forward for acknowledging that, hey, you wake up in the morning, something is fighting you, wants to drag you in the mud. And that's why you begin to engage in the things of the spirit to overcome, overcome and walk as those made alive in Christ and not as a dead man walking, praise God. So I want to encourage everyone, ask the Holy Spirit because it's easiest to say, Oh, I can just, I'll change. I won't do this anymore. I won't do that scene. Oh, look at the list. Say, well, those were, that church was messed up. But hello, in our church, you could stop everyone. Maybe people, you do not know what struggle they're going through in their mind. They Christian just like you and me, but everybody has different struggle. It's just a reminder that in church, there are struggle. Do not ignore those struggle. John 16, 7 to 8 is a good passage that we like to talk about. The paraclete, the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised his disciples, say, I am going, but he will be there. I like to read you the Amplified Version. It says, it calls him, uh, it says in verse um uh, 7b it says because if you do not go if I do not go away the comforter the counselor the helper the advocate the intercessor the strengthener the one who strengthens you the standby will not come to you into close fellowship with you but if I go away I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you so we have a right to say Lord your word promises in John uh, 16 you say that you if you you will send the power the Holy Spirit to help us in these issues right now in my life because I have flesh with me fighting conflict Lord let your Holy Spirit the strengthener the advocate the helper help me Holy Spirit in this area and he is the spirit of truth he will help us let's go to verse 11 when I read verse 11 in Colossians chapter 3 it goes together with verse 25. It says, verse 11, it says, Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, sentient, slave or free, but Christ is in all and is all. If you jump a few verses, we'll come back to it. Verse 25 says, Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. I learned something in, in those two verses. We leave the verses in between, we'll come back to them, but just verse 11 of Colossians 3, there is no favoritism in God. So Paul reminded them that those issues that are going on in the church, those sin, God will punish the slave the same as he will punish the Jews, the same as he will punish the Gentiles. 
There's no favoritism. He is a faithful God. He's a just God. Those who have sinned, they will be punished the same way, equally. And so you could take it and you can take that and stop there. But I like to always look at the positive side as well. The flip coin. On the flip coin side, if God will punish the Jews the same way as the Gentiles in Christ, the same way as a slave, then God will bless the Jews the same way as you bless the Gentile, the same way as you bless you and me, the same way as you bless anyone, whether you're Indian, African, uh, white, black, Japanese, whatever your nation, God will bless you if you are in Christ the same way as you will bless any of his children. This is why I would like to encourage you to listen up to any testimony you heard. Have you heard? God has done something for sister so-and-so. Have you heard? God has done something for brother so-and-so. That means the same God who's just when it comes to the, the treating lack of parents, like you've done wrong, there will be a consequence. The same God is also faithful. He'll also bless you the same way. If you go to him, Father, I hear. This is why I go back to that song in the worship, God of miracles come. I have heard in my time of being a believer, God performing all sorts of miracles. I've heard of financial breakthroughs. I've heard of healing miracles breakthrough. I've heard of supernatural happening that you cannot explain why this happened. I have seen in my own life where God just scooped me off before I could like, drown and be like dead. God scooped me like that. I have seen miracles in my life and in other people's life. So I want to encourage you even through these verses that while we're reading the severity of the same God, Paul saying, I'm reminding you, is coming, it will punish those who are, who are doing wrong but i want you to also remember i know it's the same god that you're crying on to for a miracle it's the same god and say father you're a god who's just i like the way it says in Romans 2 11 i read the amplified version remember i always like to go back to another scripture to make sense of what we're picking up from the bible study from whichever book that we're studying now in colossians to make sense Romans 2 11 says for god does not show favoritism that's the amplifier it says that the, the new international version it says the amplifier classic says god does not show no particularity undue favor or unfairness with him with him, one man is not different from another. Be encouraged. What breakfast do you need today? Think of anyone you've ever heard about a testimony and go to God. I heard you did this for a Jew. You can do this for a Gentile too. I've heard you've done this for someone that you can name. I've heard this testimony. Same God we're praying to. He says he's in all is in all remember the message that in him we move in him we have our being is in all things we came from you so we look to you let's go back now to verses 12 to 16. let's read verses 12 it says from galatians we are sorry colossians chapter 3 therefore as god's chosen people holy and dearly loved clothe yourself with compassion the law of replacement now Paul is introducing. Remember the list I have just told you about the wrong things happening, the sin, the anger, the malice, all those wrong, filthy words, all those things, immorality, sexual immorality, all those things. Now the law of replacement is introducing in verse 12. It says, it says now clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all this virtue, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let me pause there for a minute. Love. If you go for on the list of all the sin, you replace it with love. It's possible not to do something wrong which is on the list. Whatever it is, someone who is uh, sinning uh, concerning anger, if you replace it with love, 
by the grace of God, with the help of the Holy Spirit, say, Lord, I come to you, have this issue, I'm always angry, I want to lose it, or even in traffic, I'm finding myself, if people knew, this is how I react, they will be amazed, Lord, I have this issue in my private life, nobody knows about when I'm alone, with the internet, whatever issues that you have. You ask the Lord to replace it with the law of replacement. Looking at the list, love is a big one that can over, over. Uh, it can, it can cover all. It can cover all. And I also like in verse fifteen, it says, "Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful." Let the message of Christ, verse sixteen, dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, through psalm, hymns, and song, from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your heart. Wow, that's a long list of. It's almost a description of a perfect church you can see how people coming together in peace in harmony in love and we are encouraged I, it is talk, talking about forgiveness you know when i read this and i say if someone is doing a bible study with us even online you're struggling with forgiveness you're asking on one side god i need you to help me with this situation on the other side you have not forgiven someone in your life that's the word for you right there. You can forget about everything that has been said that is not relevant to you. Remember, always speak what is had relevant to your life as the Spirit speaks to you right now as you're going through the Bible study. And I saw that word forgiveness. It said forgive one another. We are approaching the end of the year. If someone wronged you, sometime that person who wronged you will never come to you and bluntly say, I am sorry. Some people will just you will leave until your dying breath. The person who wronged you won't come to you and say, I am sorry. But you do not stay in that prison and lock the other person in prison. You release the person who hurt you. Say, I release you. Even if you don't see them face to face. Forgiveness, I hear it. It's someone, as I was reading it, someone out there, someone maybe in here, you need to forgive someone. You're asking God to answer this one prayer here, but so long as you have not forgiven those who hurt you, it's, you, it's locked. You lock yourself in a prison, you lock the other person in a prison. Release them, let them go, release yourself as well. The breakthrough you're asking for will come like that. Forgiveness, that's just for somebody. It talks about unity, the need for peace, the peace of Christ ruling your heart. Friend, is peace ruling your heart. If you're in the middle of making a decision, the peace of Christ is not ruling your heart. You know you're not supposed to do that and that. The peace of Christ. Paul said the peace is supposed to rule your heart. Don't rush into doing something without the peace of Christ ruling your heart. Is God speaking to somebody through this passage? Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Come into unity. Again, a beautiful picture of encouraging. It says, come and sing with song, uh, with him, sing to God. It's another picture of encouraging us why we should come together as a church, why we should bother leaving our houses, taking off our pajamas just to come and meet other believers. You know, why we should bother because easy in it's easy in this day and age since the COVID to just be comfortable in our home home and just say hmm which church shall I watch today press play cup of tea and yeah like I'm doing church at home you know it's easy but there's a place for unity unity means you need to be united with other people it's very biblical and it says come and sing those hymns to God it's putting a smile on your heavenly father there is a place for that church. Please, please do not forget the need that, oh, it's very biblical. Do not forget that. It's very biblical to come together as a body of Christ 
and pray for God to bring unity because we are very prone to fight with each other. Oh my goodness, some people in church, maybe you'll sit on that side, the other brother or sister sits on that side because you can't stand each other. But hey, you're learning something because you're coming together in church to pray into the same God in unity. And that's what we are encouraged to do, even Paul, that above everything that is going on, let he remember first there's a conflict in your body because of the flesh that's very normal the conflict that you and i would experience but because of the help of the holy spirit it's okay to overcome it and come together verse 17 in verse 17 is quite interesting we won't read everything but, but, well, but we will skip a bit because it's just self-explanatory instruction for christian household how husband should treat their wife and their children and so forth and wife should treat their husband which is good but let's read verse 17 and jump to verse 20 24 verse 17 say whatever you do whether in word or deed do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to the God to God the Father through him verse 22 says slave obey your earthly master in everything and do it not only when their eyes are on you and to carry their favor but with sincerity of heart and reverence to the lord i like verse 23 says whatever you do work at it with all your heart as working for the lord not for human master since you know you will receive an inheritance verse 24 from the lord as a reward it is the lord christ you are serving isn't that something it says whatever you do do it with all your heart and with all your mind as well as serving the lord i find encouragement in that it means whether you are working as a tax collector whether you are working as a bus driver whether you are retired if you are coming to church then be all in it's talking about passion be passionate for god serve him you are serving in whatever you're doing. Be your best at what you're doing. If you are a student, then do as well you are studying for the glory of God. Anything you are doing, work, it doesn't matter. Name your work, your job title. Do it as well you are serving God. It's funny how Paul put even slave, obey your master. In those days, they were slave. So the Bible did not leave out even the slave. But hello, how many people are slave to their work? They spent more time at work than in their bed or in their houses, not looking at anyone. But that's many people's work. Like the, the hours they spend outside, it's like being slave. Yet the Bible did not leave out in, in, instruction for those people working, for those people doing also, uh, you know, just to, to survive. Whatever you're doing, Paul says, do it as though you're serving the Lord. Your reward is awaiting in heaven. And I want to add to this saying, I'm seeing where I read whatever you do, work at it, at it with all your heart. Another translation we say with all your might, your strength, your energy. Strength is energy, passion. We have really passionless people. Even in church, if you are coming to church, be your best church person. Be the passionate person that you are in church because it's not to show that, you see, Pastor, I was here. It's not to show that, well, I tipped my ball. It's for God. Whatever you do it, serve God in what you're doing. Be the best mother. If you're the mother, you have the little one, be your, throw yourself in. It's to give it all. You are going to work. You are a nurse. Serve God while you're tending to people, anything, even a retired person, when you're stopping um, uh, someone to chat with that person in the street or to look out at the neighbor who fell, whatever it is, just keep be all in. That's what Paul is encouraging. Everything is possible to glorify God. And I want to finish off soon with Ecclesiastes 9.10 because this 
ending of Colossians chapter 3 reminded me of Ecclesiastes 9 10. When I was a student many years ago, I uh, remember I was on campus and I was living on campus. I had Ecclesiastes 9 10 on my door. So when you come into my room, before you leave the room, you have to see it. I had it written in big writing. Ecclesiastes 9 10, it says, it says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working, no planning, no wisdom, no knowledge. So basically, remember the flesh, Paul talks about it. We are, we are, you know, we got the flesh with us. We might be prone to death, but whatever we do, so long as we are alive, we need to live as those made alive in Christ, not dead men working, walking around like we do not know what God says. We do not know what, how he's calling us. There's an expectation for us to live in a certain way. So basically we had an exciting message. I am still meditating on the message from last week, from just those verses, Colossians chapter 3. I think it was a deep revelation. I will go back and listen to it and I encourage you, please listen to the first part, Colossians. But those things, wonderful things that we heard about that is possible to be ruling and reigning with Christ, to come up higher in the realm of the, the realities of heaven. Those things will be made void if we do not know how to apply verse 5, verse 6, verse 7, all the way to verse 25, because he's explaining now. Remember, we're saying with the Bible study, we're staying in context. And still learning what is God saying to us, the reality of things. Let's deal with it. Is it unforgiveness? God spoke to you. What sin is just because it's not obvious to everybody else, but God is seeing everyone. Whatever we're doing, even our work, our no day to day life, even as a student, I rely on that verse. I saw it as I was going out. Some days I'll feel like I don't really feel like studying today, but I was reminded in my room saying, when you're going out to read your book, do it with all your strength because that's the the season you're in but do it as though you're serving the lord amen so let live as those made alive in christ that will conclude chapter three and next time we'll pick up chapter four of colossians allow me to pray and bless everyone so colossians three is it covers so many different topics many matters of christian faith but i believe every one of us will pick something like a buffet you will pick what God is saying to you from the book of Colossians, especially chapter 3. It's intense. But what is God saying to you, my friend? Would you listen and would you put that into, you know, apply that word? What is God saying to you? Until you receive your, you, until you, you do what God gives you as an instruction here today, you won't get the breakthrough you're praying for. You want to do what God says, the breakthrough will come. Heavenly Father, I give you praise and I give you glory and I thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, I know you are speaking to each and every one of us. Oh, I pray there was so much to cover in this passage of scripture, but I ask that you will make it relevant to each and every one of us. And I ask that you will give us the courage to apply your words. Oftentimes we listen and say, oh, that's a good message. And then until we meet again, goodbye. We don't have the energy or even the courage to go back and say, really, I really need to check what's going on. What scene is God telling me to actually sit down and say, I, can, I need to deal with this now. I cannot wait until the end of the year. I need to deal with this now. I'm asking God for this breakthrough, but did I listen to what he says last week and last year? Father, speak to my friend. Speak to my friend online. Give them the courage. Speak to my friend here in the building. You know exactly where they're at. Give us all the courage to do everything that we do as well as serving you. We ask this thing in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.